love one. A love one. This girl, Sayo, works at a tea shop, and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, uh, I just thought why she was like three brothers quietly for this one girl. Anyway, Sayo is actually the leader of the evil strawberry twins leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet times three. <laughs> yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Oh, yes, Pearl. But what happens next? I want to know. Miss Sayo, does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. I'm going to stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater starting this week. I can't believe she's really considering it. <laughs> Jim Ninja. So what's the Jim Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. The Jam and Ninja, like the Samurai shows, is geared towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall, but became a big pop star anyway. Uh, what? <laughs> he was a really lousy ninja, and absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. Boy, can you sing? With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. The final fight in front of his beloved princess was so Jammin versus the Muramachi Five. Suddenly, our very hero catches a not so jammin coal of the night before Battle 3. Oh, that's too bad for him. Yeah. But this kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Um. Yes, Pearl. But what happens next? I want to know. Jammin. The Jammin Ninja. Will you be able to sing? What about Princess Miss Ola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, which show should I watch? Hmm. <laughs> I can't believe she's really considering it. <laughs> uh, do you know, uh, her? Hey, that's Miss Sanders. She's a mass manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. So Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Miss Sanders?
she has the initials AA. You saw this article and then thought to make some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were working around this corridor store last night. Oh, she was an alien. Right. 
Yeah, probably because she's wearing a strange helmet. Yeah, even with her helmet on. I thought she was in the other one, Kyle. I think that's probably best kept to herself. You know what I mean? Find out. 
Um, well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. But I've already told you everything I know, dude. Can you tell me about your activities? After I got the work, I took a break and went back to school. I had that post ceremony staged for me. So I was in my nickel samurai. And you were alone the entire time. My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show. I told you, you I have no idea about any press conference, alright? That's strange. I thought that the samurai was running. Anyway, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kind of noisy. Florida was already dead at that time. Yeah, that's what I gathered away with my manager. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do anything. So. And that's when the detective in the green coat showed up. He searched me. And then, out of the room, the dude arrested me. Victim. About you and the victim, Mr. Martin. What sort of... He's got nothing to do with anything. Right, this. Yep. Okay, I want to show you... That's my manager. Did you meet her? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Strong woman, right? And she takes good care of me. Such a long as well. What do you think about this art? You're talking about your thing with Juan. I always thought she was a bit careless in the way she handled it. That's it. That's it.
pleasure to manage with his next disposition. Mm. Sir and Guard does seem like a rather good man. Always doing as he's told. It's always my manager, right? Why are you hiding things? 
Did you know A silly third grade tabloid article. If you even had half your wits about it, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people have already bought into the story. That's to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Not to sell standard good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to close to someone? if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running to 1,000 meter damage. What's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? I've heard this sound somewhere before. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? For some reason, whenever I hear that sound, she pops out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened in the last time. So sorry, I've got to make myself scarce. Later, pal. Yo! At last, you reveal your truth. Mr. Phoenix Wright. Don't put it too much. Briefing is about to begin. Yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Ow, what does she throw at me now? What is this? Well, I guess this means I've got to get back to the precinct now, pal. If you ever need me, come down to the criminal affairs department. Alright. And if you can't, 
can. Try not to let Miss Von Karma see you. Scruffy Detective is here. Great. Now even Curls is calling him Scruffy. Thanks, Francisco. They said something about an investigation briefing earlier, right? Why don't we come back and try again later when they're done? Okay, I guess that's all we can do, right, Mr. Dick? It's on the table here. Oh, so it doesn't go right into my inventory. Mr. Dick! What's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Autograph? The paper's got Mr. Corda's name written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Uh, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Look here, see how it says to my dearest Wendy, and more normal letters here? Th this sloppy, unreadable writing, it's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on. Wendy, I've heard that name somewhere before. Okay. Yeah. Can I get something out of you, the old lady? <laughs> Autograph. Yes, it is. And it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. Th that's me, right? Right. Um, my name is Wendy Oldman, so that Wendy has to be me. Well, it may say Wendy, but somehow I don't think Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please, give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh, I can't let you have it. Yes, yes, I know. And how about an exchange? Wow, she must really want this autograph. <laughs> My offer isn't good enough for you. Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. One the old bag, ready to open up her heart. All for my dearest one. <laughs> Minding my own business. Can you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it. A gift certificate? I've been recruited to the end for that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time, you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. Ricard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know you did my dear poor Juan, and I just do. Yellow belly chicken. A yellow belly chicken. I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did. What did Mr. Andrade ever do to her to this? Fast. What did Mr. Andrade do to you to make you so? You don't know. That guy. He framed my home. He created that scandal that played for him. Mr. Dick. What is it? What's a skin? Oh, uh, um, I'll tell you about that after you get home. Okay. Poor Juan, what a straight out of files of that file tech. Mr. Nick, what do files and wild tech do? Um, how about we just listen to what this old bag has to say for now? Okay, cool. So, this old bag, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved the girl onto Juan. Don't manage her? The water? 
thought lawyers were smart. It was really a scandal that made Juan lose his face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Miss Wolbeck? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. Angard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Uh, of course, a tabloid. Next week? Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbeck have information like that? And where did she get it? Investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are all airtight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. <laughs> airtight evidence? So what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't get any old pizzas, pal. There's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this one. The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm. That's the button that you found during your body search of Mr. Angari. Yep, I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai special pants. Oh. Um, the second one is the knife in his chest. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Oh, who's our name? You didn't even have to ask for this. It's all these fingerprints. Mars trying. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Airtight testing. So, what about this airtight testing? It's that old security lady, this old man. I thought so. What do you mean? Thoughts? Did she tell you something? Else? Um, well, 
can I use Boulder not to open that mouth if there's some black? They're black, I'm stuck on 10, and there's no turning it down, trust me. Yeah, well, this old man saw it all, you know? She saw Mr. Andard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way! Perfect in any way, everybody's perfect. 
Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time in the effects of this country. You! You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never! Mr. Phoenix Wright. I will see you tomorrow. Totally. Still the same wild mare she always has. Was. Oh, sure. Tomorrow's trial. I thought you, the prosecutor, Miles Edward, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I, I never wanted to see you again. Miles, I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you going to run tomorrow's trial? You heard of it, right? That wild mare hasn't given in. Say one. Yeah. Trial tomorrow. What is that supposed to mean? I have something to fit in if I do lack. And working together is the definition of truth. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand the certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous. A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred von Karma is still my mentor. And a perfect winemaker is a proof of von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Do you leave because you had lost your perfect winner? I think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It would be better for everyone if you never came back to the dead eventualist. I see, but let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is the real reason? Why stand in court? Well, with Francisca, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. But the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. Save their lives. Save their clients, I say. Those who think only of their own legal driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are very nice to me. Even if you're a product or someone like you, it's it looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? Hmm. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon. Andrews isn't here. That's not good. I still have a few questions I want to ask her. And she has that psych lock on her heart, right? Well, we don't have much of a choice. I guess we'll have to come back later. Uh, 
uh, no, I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me. I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. You're in detention. Who in the world are you going to eat with? The security guard? Mr. Nick. This is Celeste Impacts, lady. Somehow, I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews mentor a long time ago. But she was suddenly called away by a different show and became Juan Florida's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. But, but her death was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. But there is still one riddle we've yet to solve. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished. Huh. This is suicide. This impacts his death is most certainly suicide. But that is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had written it. Suicide note? But how do you know this impacts that had been written such a note? There is no solid evidence. However, we did find traces of ink on the right of the finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police thinks it was Mr. Juan Corda himself. The, the victim? He was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Corda hid his own manager's suicide note. But why? As long as we know it's missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this way. This is the suicide report. Part 1. Part 1. Yeah. 
Sorts of things in this refrigerator. Character bottle and character bottle are both empty. Empty. It's too much of a hassle to throw them away. I guess they're all vegetable juices. I guess he must have been a real health nut. Oh, there's a beet, some ketchup, and a bottle of strawberry jam too. Maybe red was his favorite color.
about Andrew's having an injury. Andrew and Andrew attempt at suicide. a few days after the death of his last impact. And why did Adrian and Andrew think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she? Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste Max, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that? Is this what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian and Andrew started attending counseling sessions. She is someone who needs a person who she can trust absolutely. Once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to take them. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety is such as her ability to live. And that's, that's the nature of her dependency on others. When Celeste and Pat suddenly committed suicide, Sanders is here. But it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisco Von Karma. It's Von Karma? What are you doing here? Oh, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so you've got some nerve to fall on you. Fall on you. That's you, Von Karma. You're the one doing the wrong. Girls. You're always falling on you. Suicide note was never found, was it? 
It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hit me. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Court. What? And, Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Court. Uh, sat by quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste is my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give. However, I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste in fact was someone very special. through with it, didn't you? Went through with what? Ending your life. Oh. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, rely only on yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie. It's a You've always searched out people. passed away so suddenly like that. I died a death of my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corda of hiding Miss Max's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was, why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one with a reason to want Mr. Corder to death. Me? Miss Impax was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. It's Andrews. This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a little pussy right now. Don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had given her suicide note, and that someone was one of her young. Celeste, without her, without her, I became scared of everything. Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So we got close to Mr. Corridor to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that happily reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely have fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I 
still have work to do, so. I understand. Oh, I have one small thing to do, so. I attempted suicide. How do I keep this? Is he a jerk? People found out about my weakness. I would soon be to die. Alright, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. I guess she's still in the game, but she probably never says anything about her sleeping character at first. Thank you for your discretion. so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all. She has been walking. Oh, free place for me too. What's wrong? Mr. Nick, <laughs> let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh, no. I'm okay. Really. I'm fine. I really am. She don't look fine to me. Uh... <laughs> Phoenix, you're a hopeless one. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have a message from my social media. Ask me anything you want. My sister, how's my ass? She's safe for now. I did not be responsible. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, I called. I read the notes she left. Then I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know she was a spirit to me. Pretty smart of her. Kid, what's he like? I don't know. Apparently, I went to answer a phone call and fell into the And? Because he didn't see the face of her attacker. Ugh. Maya is locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything. Sweets are the only way to go. 
I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Turn it. It's locked. If the store's locked, it's easy enough to open. A TV. A hero always uses a plastic card or a stick piece of card. Then click. They magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here. There's no name on it. There's a picture in a seashell. What a strange card. Ah, that's it! This shelf card. If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. Alright, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnap. I did it! Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting. <laughs>